Y'all, what I'm telling you, depression will literally kick your ass. Like, I had um, suicide attempts. I was, like, just going through a dark... What's up, Zo Gang? And I'm back with another video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn post notifications on so you can know every time I post a new video. So today, 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 today. So today's video is going to be like I'm going to be telling y'all about how I overcame depression and like how I got depression in the first place. So um, when I started this channel, I told you guys that I was going to be like doing a little bit of everything. I, I want y'all to know me um, when I'm up and when I'm down. Like I want y'all to know me inside and out. I'm not gonna hold any secrets or nothing. I want y'all to know me like period. And you, you never know how your story can help somebody um, else. Like, I, I remember when I did my coming out story, I got a lot of messages and I was really surprised that my story and I helped every, anybody else, like, with their depression and anxiety and stuff like that. So, so I'm just going to be getting down to the nitty gritty. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you purchase your Me and Greet tickets. As y'all know, September 3rd, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. We'll be in Houston, Texas. $15 online and 20 at the door. So without further ado, let's get into this video. And I'm back. So y'all, um, let's really get into it. So I don't know like where to start with with the video i don't really know where it's like so much done happened so much stuff done happened and i know let me know like your story and how you got over depression and how it started for you and i will respond i read my comments and i respond to people that i can too <laughs> if that makes sense so um basically like as everybody know that I'm from Haiti, Port-au-Prince. I, I was born and raised there. Um, and it's not really, they don't approve. I'm not even gonna beat around the bush with it. They don't approve of like the LGBTQ. Yeah, I'm not even gonna lie, I be forgetting like, don't come for me. So, <laughs> so with, with me and my depression started at like a really, really young age like i had insecurities about myself too like people might find that really surprising of how i'd be like yeah baddest baddest b type shit like that so um um i would literally when i would when i was a kid like i would try to like hide who i was like i have a high-pitched voice i would try to like tone it down like make it a little deep to like i was always trying to please my family like that was like my family have a big part of my depression like i they took me through it and i know they're watching this i don't care i'm grown i pay my own bills so um with me so my dad wasn't really in my well, i'm not even gonna say really he wasn't in my life at all so like my mom was like my main provider. She did everything for me. Like she did what needed to be done as a mother. So she did her big one. Um, and so, and then my stepdad came around. Um, my stepdad came, came around when I was like, I, I do not remember what age I was. So when I came to America, when I came to America in Haiti, I was, I was good. Like I was kind of okay. But when I came to America, that's when shit got dark. It went dark from there. So it was like, like it's it's a thing where stepdads and like stepkids, they usually like don't get along. Like when like they're old, older, like when the age I was, I was like, I think eight or 10 or something like that. 
I don't know what it was. He did not, he didn't like me at all. Like, I know he didn't like me. But I would always try to ignore what he would say, the little, um, the little gay jokes, the little side comments. Like, I would ignore it most of the time. And then my, my aunties would be like, oh, just ignore it. Like, stuff, stuff like that. Nobody was really saying nothing to him, like, type of thing. And then, like, when his friends would come around, he would just be like, oh, um, oh, um, yeah, like, like, the gay jokes, like, the, the gay jokes, I would, like, you, y'all know the gay jokes, like, that straight people be trying to make, to make us feel uncomfortable. Well, it got to me, because I was young, and, like, I was still trying to figure out who I was, and I hung out with all girls, literally, I don't hang with boys, I hang with all girls. So, um, when, like, when I would try to, like, tell my mom and stuff like that, it was, it was the same thing. Ignore it. Just try not to ignore it, you know, make conversation. But it was not working out. It was like, when my mom was around, it was all good. But when she wasn't around, it was like the, like, oh, fag, like, stuff like that. So, I would ignore, ignore, ignore. It's only so much a bitch can ignore. Yeah. So, um, I got to the point where, like, I was singing at church and stuff like that. And then, you know, like, I was doing my big one. If you know I can sing, I can sing. Yeah. Won't hear it, though. <laughs> so, um, and then I, so further down the line, like, like, when I said my family had a big part in my depression and how my depression went. So, um, I got to, when, whenever I would go to family events and stuff like that, it would be like, doors couldn't be closed when I was in the room, like, type shit. Like, doors could not be closed. If it was all boys and, and my gas was, was in there, the doors could not be closed. Like, it had to be open because I was in there. So, um, I would, and then when, when, when I was in around, doors could be closed and all this other stuff, everybody was good. But when I came around, it was just like a uncomfortable, like everybody was so uncomfortable with me being around, but, but it would be like, eh, but we'd be talking behind my back. So with, with the whole, and then when I, when my auntie outed me, um, if you didn't watch my coming out story, go, uh, go, go watch it. It's on the BJTV page. Um, when that's when things got really, really, really dark because my mom kicked me out and um the on uh, the next day I went to work I went to work and um no but everybody at work didn't know nothing because I anytime I'm going through something I don't like walk around oh I'm going through so much right now because what are you gonna do to fix it like what the fuck are you gonna do so I just kept I was like hey y'all like happy like that's something I know how to do. I know how to keep a smile on my face. That's one thing I grew, like, I knew how to do. Like, fake it with bitches. So, um, um, I went to work, and I was, like, happy, laughing, laughing, laughing. And then, like, it was just all piling up in my head. Like, like wow, I don't have nowhere to go after work. Like, I'm, like, going through it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't have nowhere to go. But, but then again, like, when I was walking... Like, it was like, it all got too much, and I broke down crying, like, in the mid, like, I was working at, at a restaurant at the time, and the manager, she pulled me in the room, and I was just pouring down crying, and I do not like crying in front of people. Like, I hate talking about this, because I, I get to win in the cry, too, like, again, and I don't want to do that on here. So, um, I'm like, um... And I was telling them what was going on. Cause like, sometimes when you're going through that dark time, you don't really be wanting to tell people your business, but sometimes it does help to get it out. But it was to the wrong people. So um, when that got out, I, I was just like crying, crying, crying. I was like pouring down and, and, and everything like that. And then that got to that. And I went to my friend's house or whatever. I stayed the night there thankful for her um and so then the, that morning I went to school 
And I was just like, I have my moments where I just shut down. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to be around anybody. I don't want to talk to nobody. So um, I used to talk to, um, I got in a fight. So another thing with that is like, it will have like, I with me, with mine, I was angry. So the next person that I could release it on, I just did it. Like somebody could mess with me, like fucking with me. So. I just fought the person and I got took down to the office. They was like, what's going on with you? I was like, I'm good, I'm fine. Just give me my five, five days and I'm gone. So, and then the lady, she touched my shoulder and I literally, I broke down again. I was just crying. So um, they were asking me like, what was going on? Like I was not finna talk to no po police, like I'm not. I'm not talking to, cause I know they would call my mom and shit like that. But it was this counselor that I used to talk to at, at school. Me and her were like really close and I used to talk, I talked to her. So I went to, to talk to her and I was just like, like I just can't anymore. I literally can't. But like I was saying I wanted to, I thought about ending my life, but I didn't want to, like I wasn't going to do it. But like, I don't know, like with that, you don't know went like your breaking point. You don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know if you gonna like, one day you're walking and all that stuff might hit you. It hits you out of, it hits you in the worst moments. You could be at the club or like, you could be at, at, at a dinner with your friends and all those thoughts and all those darkness, all that stuff would just come and just fill your head up and your vibe would just be dead, like be dead. So, um, and then the police, the police guy, like the policeman, like the, the school camp, campus police, he was sit, standing behind the door and I didn't know that. And he overheard me and I, I was kind of cool with him too, but he was like, um, let's go have a conversation. He was like, oh, what's going on and stuff. I got in the car, dumb ass, just dumb. I was just dumb, y'all, dumb. Don't even say it in the comments, I was just dumb. So, um. When I got to um, the car, he was like, let's go for a ride and talk and stuff. He didn't handcuff me, so I wasn't really suspicious. Like, it was like, I was cool with him, so I didn't think nothing. I didn't think he was gonna, t I didn't know what, what PIMS was or anything like that. Um, so he took me to PIMS and I was just sitting there with no jacket. I had shorts on that day, I was cold as hell. So um, with that, I was in PIMS. I was like, I don't think that place helps you. I feel like it makes you even more sadder and takes you deeper into your darkness type of thing. Cause when I was there, I was I was in a room by, uh, by myself. I was like, I, I was a harm to other people or whatever they said. Um, so I, I was in a room by myself and I was just like with my thoughts, which weren't good. Like in the room darkest, like it was white, but it was like dark at nighttime. So I was just stuck like this not sleeping, I didn't sleep at all. And then, so with all that, like, and then like my family, they they isolated me. They didn't want nothing to do with me, which I don't care about. Like, I really don't care. But then, then again, I did because it was like, family is supposed to be, be someone that like, supposed to show you love more than anybody else in, in, in your life type thing. And like with my my mom, like I love my mom to death. Like we had our differences. I am not going to cry on here, but it was just like it's something that I just I just can't talk about. It's I it's it's so much. Like the point of my video is like to 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 people that's out there that's going through those tough times. That's like they have they're surrounded by people or family or friends, like boyfriends, friends, girlfriends, whatever you like out there. If you're around somebody that doesn't show you 100% love, get the f away from them now. Like, you don't need them in your life. I wish, I wish I knew that early on in my life, like early on in my life, I wish somebody would tell me. Like, it was this verse that I love so much. The pain that you are going through can't compare to the joy that is coming. That's Romans 8, verse 8, y'all. Yeah, I know the Bible.
<laughs> so like the pain you are going through can't compare to the joy that is coming. I take that as like I was going through so much pain. I uh, I had suicide attempts. I had multiple of those. Like I had um, suicide attempts. I was like just going through a dark time. I tried praying. I tried like literally praying. I tried the whole meditating thing, but I just, I didn't get into that. Like, like praying and then I was just waiting, 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 waiting for change and change and change. It was like nobody was changing. So I had to change who I was around. Like that's your best thing. If the person not, if people not willing to change to better for like, to like put your feelings first, just change who you're around like type thing. Like with me and, and like, I'm better now. I'm at a great place. Like y'all, I was skinny as hell. And I know like, like I'm gonna put a picture. I might put a picture up. I was so skinny. I looked like I was dying. Like, like, yes. Um, and I, I wish, I just wish more people, like I want y'all, like if you're out there and you're watching this video, don't let those dark times put you down because they make you way stronger like they show you like who's fake who's actually here for you at your lowest you will see who your real friends are and who are your real family members are like i had to figure all that out by myself now i'm, I'm at a place where like I, I never thought i would be happy i never thought i would be smiling not just like a fake smile but like actually smiling because like y'all what i'm telling you depression will literally kick your ass like like i lost a sister to suicide um and i i still wish to this day i would have got the chance to like do something or say something like you know that like but when stuff like that happened all you can say is I wish I could have done that, but then it, like, you know, it's just like, that's a whole different topic too on, on, on top of it. Like, I'm like holding, like, I'm doing so good at not crying, y'all. Like, I'm trying so hard, like, not to. So it's like, the point of this vi vi video is don't let your dark times, because guess what? In that dark tunnel, there is light at the end of it. There's a bright light waiting for you so keep fighting keep pushing keep stunting on these haters like do what you got to do do what's best for you do what's best for you because guess what whether you do good you do bad you turn gay you you transition you become a still you still you do whatever they're going to talk you could be a billionaire and be giving food to the homeless they're gonna be like, oh, oh, you think he all that, like stuff like that. But people is going to do and talk about whatever they want to. And I came to a place where I kind of forgave. I'm not gonna say I all the way forgave everybody because I I, had, I need to have a conversation with people, but it might not happen because I might hate a bitch that shit. So um, I'll just, I'm just keep doing me. And so, this is the end of this video. Um, I know it was kind of all over the place. <laughs> don't judge me. I don't know how to really put all that together. And I rate myself a 10 for holding it together because I know y'all be ready to screenshot and put a bitch on TikTok. <laughs> y'all be too ready. So, so I did my, I held it together. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And comment down below how you felt about this video, if this video helped you out. If y'all ever need advice, y'all more than welcome to text me. I will try and text, like, when I see it, I will try and text back as fast as possible. I love y'all. I wouldn't be where I'm at without you guys. And I love all of you. I love all of you. So, comment down below, Zoe Gang. And make sure you share this video with everybody you know. Share this video with somebody that you think would benefit from this video and would make their day better and, you know, make them feel better. So without further ado, I'm out.